wasn't that long ago that we played this lot last, was it? Good evening, or whatever time of day it is, wherever it is in the world that you're watching this. I'm Gatesy, as usual, on Falls from Iron. This is our pre-match discussion for our trip along to Manchester, sunny Manchester, to face Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Red Devils. Yep, yep, we got to face them again a couple of days after what happened on Sunday. Um, not sure about this one. I mean, to be honest with you, this... It's been really difficult for me to try and predict an 11 for both teams. I mean, it's it's one of those, you know, both teams are doing well in the Premier League. Both teams are involved in Europe. So I kind of think that probably what we'll see from both teams is a lot of players that up to this point have probably not got an awful lot of action. So that that's the way I, I mean you'll probably I'm going to show you the uh the predicted lineups that I've gone with but you guys in the live chat I mean please feel free to put in your what you think the starting 11 is going to be certainly for West Ham but if you feel like putting the Manchester United 11 in please do um so I'll get it up here um that is I'll go full screen with that so this is what I suspect might be kicked out by Mr David Moyes up at Old Trafford now, I rather suspect Ariola's going to start. And if he doesn't, I think questions will probably be asked because, you know, I think a lot of people were expecting him to make his first team debut in Zagreb. That didn't happen. I then started to think, oh, OK, does that mean he's going to make his debut against Manchester United in the Premier League? Well, obviously he didn't. So you're sort of sitting there thinking, well, OK, well, he's got to play against Manchester United in the Cup, hasn't he? So if he doesn't, Hmm. I, I do think that raises some serious questions. Fabianski, did he have a bad game against Manchester United? No, I think he made a couple of good saves, but I do think that he was culpable, certainly for the opener. Couldn't do anything about the Lingard goal. No problem about that. But um, certainly the opener from Ronaldo, I do question whether he could have come and at least pressurised Ronaldo, tried to claim the ball as it was being crossed in, be a distraction, whatever. He didn't. He stayed. He was rooted to his line, which seems to be a common theme with Fabianski in the last couple of years. And we know what happened. He he got the equaliser. Um, and then, you know, they, they obviously went on to, to win the game and get all three points in a very, very cruel fashion. But there you go. Um, I suspect we're going to go with a back four. I don't think that there's going to be too much tinkering, but I think it's going to be a complete reshuffle. I think it's going to be Arthur Masuaku coming in at left fullback. God help us. Um, you know, would I put him there? No, I'd put him where Vlasic is, as you can see. He's sort of like on the left wing. But I would not I would never have Masuaku as a left fullback, but i got a sneaking suspicion we might see it tomorrow. Um, Centre-backs, I'd have Issa Diop and Craig Dawson. Diop, I think, is a fantastic centre-back. He's been underutilised. I think that long-term, he probably will be the partner for Kurt Zuma going forwards because Angelo Ogbonna, Brilliant player, though he is for us. Um, you know, he's 33, he'll be 34 in May next year. So I think that possibly his time is is winding down. And Diop, obviously being a fellow French speaker, same as Kurt Zuma, I think they could probably have a really good understanding. Um, Craig Dawson, you know, very experienced player, um, will come in and, and do a, a good job. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ben Johnson at right back. And that's for me, that's the position where I want to see him. I don't want to see him in central midfield. I don't want to see him at left back. I don't want to see him on the wing. Um, he's a right back. Put the square peg in a square pole. Don't put a square peg in a round hole. So I I'd like to see him at right back. I really would. Um, moving a little bit further forwards, Alex Crow, I think, is going to make his debut. And there is Mark Noble, the captain's armband round his arm. Um, He's got now. I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on this. Um, the penalty against Manchester United the other day. Now, both David Moyes and Mark Noble on social media, a lot of people have taken to their keyboard to vent their spleen and all the rest of it. And hindsight is perfect vision. It really, really is. If David Moyes has got one of the best penalty exponent in Europe sitting on the bench, and he's not, he's got one substitute left to make, if the penalty had been given to someone else. Like I say, hindsight is always perfect vision. But just suppose Declan Rice took the penalty. Saeed Ben Rama took the penalty. Thomas Socek, anyone. And they missed it. We'd all then be jumping up and down and saying, why didn't he bring on Mark Noble? 
Now, the only reason we're complaining about it is because Mark Noble had the penalty saved. But Mark Noble's been very reliable for us in, as far as penalties are concerned down the years. David Moyes has got more decisions right than he's got wrong in his time as West Ham manager. I, I find it quite staggering some of the comments that I've seen out there. Listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I just think it's a bit over the top. Um, and I think both Mark Noble and, and David Moyes deserve a little bit more. They've got a bit more credit in the bank than than I think they're, they're being sort of given leeway for. But that's just my take on it. Um, if, if Mark Noble would have scored, everybody would have said David Moyes is a tactical genius. He didn't. So now people seem to be having a bit of a pop at him. But like I say, it's all a game of opinions. That's mine. Um, OK, so midfield offensive three. I wouldn't be shocked to see Ryan Fredericks playing in front of Ben Johnson. I really wouldn't. And I think he could do a very good job there, to be perfectly honest. I think he was one of the better players against Zagreb, um, you know, and he played in that position, uh, notably against Aston Villa, against um, at Villa Park when we won 3-1 on Jesse Lingard's debut. Wouldn't be surprised to see him there, just giving a little bit of a protective shield to Ben Johnson, the young buck, um, to try and give him a little bit of um, a little bit of a leg up. Lanzini, I think, might well come in in the number ten position, and then on the left, I wouldn't be shocked if we see Nikola Vlasic. Uh, and then up front, I wouldn't be again. I wouldn't be shocked to see Andre Yarmolenko. I'm not saying I want to see Andre Yarmolenko. I think he was very very disappointing. He came, you know he came on as a sub. Um, you know, and, and let's stop and think about it. It's one of the prestige teams in world football you're playing against. It's Manchester United. And for me, I just saw a guy that just didn't seem to give a monkeys. He seemed like he was going through the motions. And for me, that's completely unacceptable. Um, it may not be that, you know, that, that might not be what was actually going through Andre Yarmolenko's mind. But, you know, that's what I was seeing. That's what a lot of people were seeing was a guy that was just basically trotting around going through the motions, not really putting that much in terms of intensity into his game. And for me, that's unacceptable in a claret and blue shirt. It's doubly unacceptable, uh, you know, in a home match. And it's even more unacceptable against a team like Manchester United when, when you're trying to get a result. So, but I wouldn't be shocked to see him playing as the number nine. So that's what I suspect the, the 11s might be. So I'm now going to come to the comments before I go and show the what I suspect might be the Manchester United 11. Uh, Wilson Raider, Raider ha hello, mate. Hope you're doing good. Who we got in here? We've got Mr. Pete Chapman. Hope you're well, my friend. Um, Wilson has gone. Ariola, Diop, Zuma, Oggy, and a back three. I did, I, I was sort of like, you know, is he going to go with a back three? I mean, we went with a back three in the League Cup game last season, didn't we? Uh, League Cup game? FA Cup, excuse me. Um, Obviously, there was a bit of changing around and all the rest of it. Um, I think I remember um, Vladimir Hufel was at right centre-back at one point. Um, anyway, moving on. So, Fredericks, Masuaku as wing-backs. Yeah, can, can easily see that. Noble, Crow holding, Vlasic, Antonio, Lanzini, front three. I don't think, I really don't see Antonio plays. I think he's going to get a bit, I think he's going to get a rest. I think he's just going to be told, yeah, you put your feet up. Might be on the bench. Might, might well be on the bench as a plan B. But I wouldn't be shocked if he gets the night off. Now, we've got a guest that's just popped into the green room. I wasn't too sure whether he was going to turn up, but here he is. Oh, hang on. I say here he is. I'm greeted by a blank screen. So there he isn't. It was Peach. Peach was there. But as usual, it's his Canadian crap net. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he's back. There he is. He's back. He's back. How are you, my son? I'm good. How are you, KC? Not bad, mate. I'm just going through the comments. There's one from Wilston Raider. That's his um, 11. Um, yep. We'll just go on. We've got Steve. Uh, your dulcet tone oh, my day is complete, yeah. Gatesy. Well, you, you yeah. have very low standards, Steve. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> glad, glad you're aboard, though, mate. Thanks, thanks for coming. Um, yep. Yeah, listen, like I say, Wilston, I'm not saying I want to see him there. Trust me. Trust me, this is not necessarily the team I would pick. This is the team that I wouldn't be shocked to see put out. I, I expect to see it being pretty much wholesale changes because I think David Moyes will say Premier League is the bread and butter, um, you know, and then obviously Europa League is 
a very nice sort of like close second. I think the League Cup at the minute of the of the three competitions we're in, because don't I mean the, the FA Cup hasn't started yet, so we're not in the FA Cup as yet. So we're in three competitions at the minute: the Premier League, the Europa League, and the League Cup. Now I think out of those three, the the, the least priority is going to be the League Cup. So I really wouldn't be shocked, like I say, if it's Hoso saying just, I'm not saying Yarmolenko would be in my starting eleven. Trust me, you wouldn't. But I wouldn't be shocked if he's in Mr. Moises. And and the same with Dawson. You know, I, I wouldn't say he's awful. I think that's probably a little bit little bit harsh on on Dawson. He's he's not great, but he'll he'll do the best he can. He's a two million pound championship defender. You know, what you see is what you get. Um, Lingard will start. Yes, that's already been stated. Ollie said, already said, I don't know if you've heard this, Peach. Ollie, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer has said, yep. Lingard starts. He will start yep. for Manchester United tomorrow. I see that. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I see that. Yeah. Steve saying he thinks we'll get beat if we put that team out. Yeah. Listen, to be honest with you, Steve, I'm, I'm half expecting to get beat. I, don't get me wrong. I don't. I don't want us to get beat, and I'm not saying that's the team I would pick, I repeat, but I wouldn't be surprised if that is the team. I'll just did you see the, the team peach that I put up? The, the predicted lineup that I heard was Ariola, Dawson Diop, uh Fredericks, Matsuaku, Carl Noble, um uh Ben Rama, Yarmolenko, Vlasic, and Antonio up front. I I don't I wouldn't be surprised. I'll tell you what, here we go. That is what I wouldn't be surprised to see. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a complete change. I've gone, Ari, and like I say, I repeat, this is not what I want, but I wouldn't yep. be shocked if this is what we have. Ariola in goal, Masuaku yep. left back, Ben Johnson right back, Diop yep. and Dawson centre backs, Crowell and Noble holding, Flashich left, Fredericks right, Lanzi in, in, in the 10, Yarmolenko up top on his Todd. I, I'm going to say, I'm not saying I want that. But I wouldn't yeah. be absolute. I would not be shocked to see it. You know, you know what? You know, honestly, you know what I'd love to see. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Ariola in goal. I'd love to see Fredericks and Matsuaku each side because I think they will hurt the United second stream with pace. Um, I'd like to see five, like three more in the back. I'd like to see okay. Diop. I'd like to see Baptiste. I really want to see Baptiste. I, I I think this like what Duke was talking about last night, where these players aren't playing against mm -hmm. better competition. This isn't going to be the best competition they're playing against, but yeah. it's a go out. So yeah, and then I'd put um then then I'd put Dawson there. So Dia Baptiste Dawson, Matsuaku, Fredericks. Um, so then now I'm left with like five, and I so um okay. crawl and noble, and then it would be a five. Crowd and Noble, and then I would have three up front, wouldn't I? So my three up front would be Vlasic. Yep. To play up front, and then each side of him, um, either Ben Rama and Oko Flex, or or uh, Ben Rama or, 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 or an Oko Flex, or who else? Uh, ben Rama or or Oko Flex or Lanzini and Oko Flex. I think He's Lanzini's playing. I'd I'd love to see Oko yeah. Flex playing. To be honest oh, with me you, too. if me I too. if I was picking the team, I'd I'd yeah. I'd be putting him in because it's like, why yeah. not? You know what what a exactly. brilliant stage for him to make exactly. his first team debut. You know you're going to yeah. Old Trafford. It's a cup yeah. game, and yeah. and let's be brutally honest about it. I think if you ask most people, who do you expect to win? Most people would probably turn around and say Manchester United, home yeah. advantage and all the rest yeah. of it, you know, and and even even their reserves, you look at it and it's like, well, bloody hell, they're, they're actually not so bad either. You know, yeah, they've, got, not they've got international yeah. players sitting on their yeah. bench. So yeah. I think most people expect that it's not going to be us that advances. So do you know what? The pressure's off. It's like, you know, if you gave turn around to Oco Flex and said, there you go, kid. I'm, I'm giving. I'm, I believe in you. I'm giving you your first yeah. team debut at Old Trafford, one of the great grounds of world football, not just English football, but world football. Yeah. Go out there and make a name for yourself. I'd love to see it. I really would. But I just, I've just got a horrible feeling it's going to be that Ukrainian one-legged donkey, as Jake would call him. I don't want to see. Like I want, like the two players. There's actually four, but like the two players, I think could step up. Would be Arco Flex, Arco Flex, sorry, and Baptiste. Um, the four that I'm saying, 
Brothers Five actually like that Ikawa, the guy we got from Chelsea. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing him. I don't know if he's quite ready, but maybe put him on the bench. Um, and uh, uh, Langello and Aspi. They, they like okay. So you you'd be putting your faith in the youth. Yes, yes, I'd be putting my faith in the youngsters, but you do have to have that. That, that sprinkle of, of seasoned pros on the bench, so if yeah. it does you, go tits up, you don't, you don't want to go it. like we did, and we did it out of necessity. I remember the game we yeah. played at um, the city ground against uh, Nottingham Forest in yeah. the FA Cup, and Sam put out a team of, of in pretty much entirely kids and reserves, and they got. I think it was 5 0. They got absolutely yeah. smashed. Most of those kids yeah. never got seen in a first team shirt again. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, probably what most of them didn't even make the bench from that point on. Um, I don't really want to sort of like put a load of kids in, um, but I wouldn't mind seeing a little sprinkling of them. As I say, if it was me picking the team, I probably would try Oco Flex. I'd probably say, yeah. like I say, I probably would try him. Um, I'd give Ben Johnson a run out. I definitely would, but I would be putting him right back. I wouldn't be putting him at left back. I wouldn't be putting oh, no, him at left back. Um, yeah. You know, um, I... Like, just because just of his pace alone, Fredericks could play right or left. So can Ben Johnson. Yeah. But Ben Johnson's you... preferred position ben... is right back, isn't it? Ben Johnson, I've got to be honest with you. When, I don't know about you guys, and any of you guys in the live chat, you can let me know what you think. But every time I've seen Ben Johnson play at left back, and when he's got done... His confidence just over time just just looks to me yeah, like nah. it's just diminishing. Yeah. And it's like yeah. he's a young player and he's got an awful lot of potential, but it just yeah. seems like any confidence is just gradually dwindling from him. It's like, I want to see him playing in his right back. I want to see him playing yes. in his proper position. And do you know what? If he's not good enough, you know, if you give him a little bit of a run and you give him opportunities and he doesn't grab the nettle, then fine. If, if he's not good enough, not a problem. Move him on. Job done. But after, after, what, you said, of, though, after mm-hmm. what you said, wouldn't wouldn't you might prefer him on the bench so we have like the back line of pros in like Fredericks, Matsuaku, um, Dawson and Diop and then just throw Baptiste in there. And then if we need Johnson, he can come on or Baptiste or vice versa, vice yeah. versa. Like, I, Listen, I, yeah, it, I this, the, this is this is the thing. This is, you know, trying to predict an 11 that David Moyes yeah. is going to select for this match is an absolute nightmare. We really don't is. Know. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, what's, you know, is he going to go, is he going to pick his strongest possible 11? I don't think yeah. he is. Is he going to yeah. pick a team of, you know, entirely like, you know, sort of like bench warmers and kids. I don't think he's going to go, no. And, no. and play a bunch of, you know, nobodies. I don't think he's yeah. going to sort of like, you know, I say nobodies, but you know what I mean? It's sort of like, I don't no, think I he's, exactly he's going to bring yeah. Winston Reid into the starting yeah. lineup or anything like that. But I think, like I say, I think that largely the players that you'll probably see taking the pitch for us tomorrow are, are going to be players that the following game against Leeds will, will either be on the bench or won't be involved at all. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. What is your... What is your opinion, um, Gatesy, of Antonio playing up front? I don't agree with it. What, tomorrow? Yeah, no. I wouldn't. No, I no. wouldn't. I'd, I'd, I'd say, no. do you know what? Because um, cause I, I think the League Cup, don't get me wrong, right? I, I'm yeah. going to say this right now. Would I like to win the League Cup? Yes, I would. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of, course, of course I would. If you, if you offered me the League Cup, I'd snap your arm off. But, yeah. but... Like I say, we're at, at this precise moment in time, we're in three competitions because the FA Cup doesn't start till January. So we're not yeah. in that now. I'm not even thinking yeah. about the FA Cup, right? Yeah. So we're in three competitions right now. Which one's our priority? Premier League, done. What one? Europa. So what's, what's second? Europa. Okay, yeah. so what we're saying is the, the lesser of our three priorities right now is the League it's Cup. The League Cup. Yeah. So, you know... And, and Antonio, we know his fitness record. We know that his yeah. hamstrings are susceptible to pulls and strains and Christ knows what. Um, what would be, you know, the doomsday scenario would be he, he, he starts tomorrow, right? He does his hamstring and he's out for six weeks. And he misses That's the game I mean. against Leeds. He misses That's the game against I mean. Vienna. He misses, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I just, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't involve him. I, I might have him on the bench. Maybe, but other than that, no, I wouldn't involve him. Would you have him on the? Yeah, so you would have him on the bench, then, Gatesy. 
I'd, I'd have him on the bench as, as yeah. but, I, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't sort of like bring him on unless I had to. I absolutely right, like 10, had 15 to. minutes or something. Yeah, right. may, yeah. maybe, maybe, or maybe, or maybe Gatesy, maybe Gatesy. If it went to penalties, we'd bring him on to score a penalty. <laughs> Don't. We tried that the other day, and look what happened. Look what happened. Uh, you know what? Though, let me tell you, my son, you are so right, and I agree with you one hundred percent. If he pulled that off. He would have looked like a legend. Would have, would have been a t- like I say. Hindsight yeah. is always perfect vision. Yeah. It would have been a tactical masterstroke if Mo- yeah. Noble would have come on and scored. He didn't. So yeah. there's an awful lot of things that have gone out. And like I say, I, I just think that both David Moyes and, and Mark Noble have more credit in the bank and just deserve a little bit more respect. You know, oh, it's 100%. as simple as that. Um, everybody's entitled to an opinion, and 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 like I say, hindsight being perfect vision, we know it was the wrong decision. We know it was because it, Casey, because we didn't Casey, come off. Casey, we all got opinions like belly buttons, but I'll show you if Declan Rice, because you saw he was hungry for it, he wanted it. But if he missed that, what would every West Ham fan be saying? Why didn't Noble come on and take it? Exactly. Why didn't Noble come on and take it? And it's like, you can't win. It's a it would have been, sport, it would have been an irrelevant conversation if David Moyes yeah. had made all yeah. the substitutions, but he didn't. And if, like I well, said okay. earlier, if if Sochek took it, if Rice took it, if Benny took it, and if they yeah. missed or had it saved, it and you've got one of the best penalty takers in Europe sitting on the yeah. bench, and you've got one pen, one sub yeah. left to make, everybody would have said, "Why didn't he bring on Noble?" One hundred percent. That's the nature of football management. That yeah. is that is yeah. the nature of football management. You're 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 on a very thin sort of like dividing line between genius and insanity. And it, it's eccentric. That, that's, that, that's, that's the definition. Mm. Exactly. That is the exact definition of eccentric. And it was beautiful seeing Moises' eccentricity, or however you want to say it, after on the post-match yep. when he just had a giggle. And he was like, I felt what I wanted to do. I did what I wanted to do. It didn't work out. But that's, that's, that's the way football that's life. goes. Nobody I, died. I, so it be. Nobody I, I died. Yeah, but there you go. Right, okay, should we have a look at what I suspect Manchester United might kick out? Okay, before you do... Okay. They're definitely not playing Ronaldo. Mr. like 100 years old. Ooh. They're definitely not playing Ooh. him. Ooh. Imagine if they did, like just, to, like, just to like, okay, yeah, you guys like, you, you guys stuffed your penalty and now we're going to yeah. play, play Ronaldo. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, can I just, I, I have to pause. I have to pause. What the hell went on when Juan Basaka tackled Suchik from behind, didn't get any contact on the ball, and well, they got a free kick? Yeah, I, I mean. I, I, was, I wanted to throw bricks at my telly, man. I was like, what are you watching? Oh, I I still haven't seen the replay of it, and obviously I'm as I've said on previous streams, I'm up in the gods, so I I'm not the person to to offer an opinion on it. But what you I will say is that that Mark Halsey, the former Premier League referee, said it was a stonewall penalty. So 100. you know, I like this one from John though. Thierry Nevers yeah. on the bench. I I yeah. I've seen him play in a couple of under twenty three games, yeah, and I good. I think he could be he could be decent from the bench. Yeah, um, I'd good. like to see it, but I mean the the point was made that the twenty threes played yesterday against Derby. Um, I, yeah. I don't know what minutes you know the, the players played, but you know they're young, fit lads. They could certainly be involved from the bench, and you know if yes. if the result is let let's 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 throw a hypothetical out there, right? Let's say yeah. seventy five minutes, the game's already di- done. Yeah. Let's let's just say it's not inconceivable. We might be two three nil down. Who knows? Um, do you know what? I wouldn't be averse to saying. Do you know what? The, the result's gone anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's no yeah. pressure on them. Let them let them sort of like get some experience yeah. under their belt for the last 10, 15 minutes. That's, That's just me. Other yeah, people yeah, would yeah. would be like, absolutely no chance. Don't do it. Yeah. But, you know, I I just think you know we need like you know me. I I've, I'm quite passionate. You know, we come out into the you know London Stadium and we did it at Upton Park before. We come out. There's that thing that says the Academy of Football. And I think we need to live up to that. We need to try and get these young players out there. We need to blood them. We need to get minutes under their belt, find out whether they're good enough. And and I agree with, I mean, Duke on the the Daily West Ham this morning, absolutely agree with it. Absolutely agree with it. Anybody that's promising 16, 17, something like that, 
Get them out playing men's football, not under 23s yeah. football, men's football, League Two, League One, Championship, whatever, as high up as you can get them. Um, yeah. You know, because they will learn so much more about themselves. They will learn so much more about the game than that, yeah. you know, in 10 games playing league football than they will do playing 20, 30, 40, 50 games against under 23s. And if they can survive that, then maybe they can survive as a Premier League player. But, you know, this under 23s football, I don't think is up to the grade. Oh, it's like it's like semi pro. It's like Sunday league to semi pro. And, yeah. and, and how are you going to play Sunday league and then face a semi pro player who like does this for half a living? Like, you're not. You're not. Yeah. And that's why what Duke said, putting like he, he mentioned Noble. You went to Hall. Ferdinand, he went out. Uh, the boy, um, um, what's his face? Um, there's been loads the of them that have gone out on like there, there's always there's always exceptions to the rule, though. I mean, I don't the boy think that went to oh. though, and and he, he had his he had his head, he Josh had his head in like a, a Terry Butcher. What was his name? Uh, oh, hang on, went out on loan to no, Anderlecht. he went out on loan, and now now he's the captain of, of Ireland, yeah, 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 Josh, Josh Cullen, yeah, there you go, there you yeah, go. yeah, yeah, there you go. yeah, there you go. yeah, uh, um, I don't know, mate, it's um. Like I say, this, everyone's going to have their opinions on it, but I just think if yeah. you've got a kid that is is showing a great deal of promise at a young age, get them out playing men's football as soon as possible. But do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what? Simon Jordan, the former Crystal Palace um, owner, turned around and said, and I've got no reason to bis disbelieve him. He's connected at football a lot more um, in closely than I am. And he turned around and said that there's an awful lot of young players, 15, 16, 17, whatever, and they're... And they're them and their agents are of the opinion that, um, you know, if they're at a Premier League club, say a Chelsea, say a West Ham, say a Arsenal, whatever, right? And their club's trying to say to them, right, OK, we want to send you to Gillingham. We want to send you to Macclesfield. Yeah. We want to send you yeah. to Coventry yeah. City, right? Yeah. These yeah. players are actually turning around in an awful lot of cases and saying, I'd rather not because it's not going to look good on my CV. That's disgusting. Seriously? That's disgusting. Seriously? That's, I listened to that and I was just like, disgusting. you've got to be kidding me. We are that's got the day to and age though, isn't it, Gracie? If that's the day and age. Like Madness. they want to be able to put on their 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 their, their Facebook and their YouTube YouTube thing like, oh, we're on the Arsenal Academy. Yeah. We're on we but you know we're on the West Ham Academy. It's like that boy who we were after, who I wish we got, and he was David Moyes' first choice, Ezzy. My father watched something about Ezzy, and he was apparently at Arsenal when he was eight years old mm -hmm. and he went out on loan here, there and everywhere. But my dad said he was a level headed boy. Like I think he went to your Gillingham's and, and, and your Peterborough's and places like that without Cut saying a Dickie Bird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Without saying a yeah. Dickie Bird. And, and he's turned out like the real deal. Like, honestly, there you go. Proof's in the pudding. Like I say, yeah. there's always exceptions. I mean, I don't think yeah. Michael Owen ever went out on loan. I'm pretty sure Joe Cole didn't go out on loan. But there's an awful lot of players that coming through the system when I was growing up, yeah. you know, I remember Rio went out on loan. Jermaine Defoe yeah. went out on loan. Frank Lampard. You know, even Mark Noble. Mark Noble, um, Noble went out you know, on loan. Like right. I say, there is exceptions to the rule, but... You know, and exactly what Walshie's just said there, just out of nappies and they're calling the shots. Unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, nuts. Yes. And yes, yes, he yes. did. He he did get loaned out to Preston and no, it didn't do him any harm. He, he, you're absolutely on the money there, Spence. Like I say, always exceptions to the rule. Anyway, should we get on with the Manchester United 11? I yes, suspect before, we might before see. You do, but before you do, just because yep. you said the man's name and okay. I rated him as a player. I thought he was brilliant when he cool. played for, you know, the three Lions. I thought he was magic. Um, he was a youngin. Um, now he's a pundit, and I, I think I think he is a, 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 a prime dickhead. Uh, if I saw him on the street, I'd love to smack him in the kneecap, smack Ooh. him on his left toe, smack him in his pinky finger. Who's that, because Gary Neville? I, no, well, he's one of them too. They, they're both peas in the pod. But yeah, Neville, he yeah, he, he's he's one of the peas in the pod. But Michael Owen, Michael oh, okay. Owen said about Jesse Lingard's goal. He said it was a brilliant goal. This, I that, and everything. The, the only thing that missed from that goal was his celebration. You're telling me that you're not happy when you score a goal and you don't want to celebrate? And I'm like, look at we, we, what we did as supporters in the 73rd minute when he came on. We gave him all of that. 
And yeah. he did not want to celebrate. He said, calm it down, boys. Christian Aldo was smiling like a Cheshire cat. Yeah. But Jay Lane's held his own. And it was Owen that said, yeah, the only thing that was missing from that goal, uh, the world of a goal, was a celebration. And I thought, Duke you would disagree but, with you. Duke, right, we had this that, conversation no, yesterday. That's why he's been to Duke. Stoke. That's why he's been to Real Madrid. That's why he's been to Manchester United. That's yeah, yeah, why he's yeah. been to, he has no but loyalty. Duke, but Duke would disagree with you because Duke said yesterday he turned around and said I don't see why he didn't celebrate and sort of like you know and and I can see it from both sides I really Everybody can. Everybody got opinions but, like belly buttons, darling. Yeah, exactly, Duke, but exactly. That's just my opinion. You know, Duke's me mate, but I don't agree with him on everything. I I think that the celebration was probably about right. Um, I it was but class. I, I can I understand what Duke's class. saying. Anyway, should we get on with the uh, with yeah, the eleven? Let's go, let's go. Sorry, okay. Yeah, so let's go, so let's go, let's this go. is what I suspect. Again, it's an absolute nightmare trying to predict an eleven for a game like this. But I rather suspect we're going to see either Dean Henderson or Tom Heaton in goal, and I'm going for Dean Henderson. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Tellez, I understand he's been out with an ankle injury, but I understand he might be in contention for tomorrow. Um, on the right, Diogo Dallo wouldn't be surprised to see him, and then you've got Bailly yeah. and Linda Lerf as the centre backs. Yeah. I think the Matic might come in. Don't forget, it was him that played the ball through to Jesse Lingard for the winner. So I, I think that. there's every chance he might he might sort of like get a starting berth. And Donny Van der Beek, I understand, is yeah. is in contention to start. And then in front of them, Sancho, Mata, and Lingard. As I say, they've already said that Lingard's definitely starting. Um, yeah. I and there's talk that Edinson Cavani might have recovered from his oh, injury yeah. to lead yeah. the line. Um, I rather think that's probably um, going to be the case. But there's an awful lot of talk about a couple of players that may well be involved in the squad, if not in the starting eleven for Manchester United. Principally, one Anthony Alanga, who is a Swedish under-21 international. A lot of things been spoken about him. So don't be surprised, guys, if you see Anthony Alanga making, um, making an appearance at some point during proceedings what do you think i mean if you if 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 the two teams that i've predicted what do you think yeah. i mean you know I, I, i'm no, not being I, I think we got a chance no i think we I, I think we're winning the match i know i know i know you think we're not um but my opinion is we're gonna roll them over um because there's gonna be that extra fuel in our fire for what happened on sunday because yep. this is a this is this is like this is a top team and they basically played, Gonzo was saying it on, on his Hammerstadt thing, they basically played a fully fit squad. And we did not look out of depth. And we didn't look Agreed. out of depth, right? And so I think with the, the, style, the, 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 the style that we play, and, and Moise's whole mantra, if you don't run, you don't play, yeah. I think fitness alone mm-hmm. will uh, edge us. Um, do you think McTominay, because like he, he was, he didn't pass a late fitness test. Do you, do you think they might throw him in just to get a bit of what just tomorrow? To get a bit ready? Yeah, McTominay, no. Yeah. no. No, okay. He played Sunday, didn't he? Did he? I, he yes, he, he must have come on as a sub because he didn't. No, start. no, he started. He started. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't paying attention then. So too many sides <laughs> for me. Too many sides for me. Wow. Yeah, no, McTominay wow. started on against uh, Sunday on Sunday, so he he I Did think he really? will get a break. But there you go. Um, should we go on to the Nuggets? Yeah, because that, that sounds good. That sounds like a team I think they, they will be very close to playing. But don't doubt it if you see Pogba on the bench. If oh, it's yeah. Easy, like McTominay down on the... I like, think they might have a couple yeah. of first-teamers. But I'm, yeah. I'm expecting to see a bench, like I say, with people like Anthony Langer and, and players like that. A lot of players, that, maybe? players that maybe. But I think a lot of it will be, will be players that, you know... Outside of Manchester, an awful lot of lot of other supporters would look at and go, "Well, I've never heard of him." I hear that. But, I hear that. You know, <laughs> once upon a time, no one had ever heard of David Beckham, as Spencer yeah. mentioned earlier. So you know, and they've all got to come from somewhere. Duke, as Duke said yesterday, he That's went it. out on So should we get yeah. on? Should we get onto the Nuggets, ladies and let's gentlemen? Go, let's, let's have some chicken McNuggets, man. Let's, let's have the Nuggets. Start. So the first one since Carlos Tevez, Tevez's famous winner for us at Old Trafford back in May 2007 that kept us in the Premier League. We haven't managed to win on any of our last 17 visits to Manchester United in all competitions, drawing four and losing 13. Ouch. I did not know that. That is that. that. 
That is ouch territory, Peach. That's not good. Yeah. Um, I don't make these facts up, ladies and gentlemen. I am just the facilitator. I am just the conduit. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. It's the messenger. It's this, the messenger. Will be, this will be the fourth League Cup meeting between Manchester United and West Ham with the home yep. side progressing in each of the previous three. The Red Devils winning 1-0 in 1985-86 third round and 4-1 in the 2016-17 quarter-final, and West Ham winning 4-0 at Upton Park in the 2010-11 quarter-final. That was two for Jonathan Spector and two for Carlton Cole, wasn't it, Beach, if I wow. remember correctly? Wow, wow, yeah, yeah, wow. That was, I'm sure that was, that was hammering yeah. down with snow that day. That yeah. was one of the few results that Avram Grant got that was any good. But there you yeah. go. Yeah, yes. Moving on, we have been knocked out of the League Cup on six of the last eight occasions when paired with fellow Premier League sides, oh including on each of the last three in 2017-18 against Arsenal, 2018-19 against Spurs, that one hurts, and 2020-21 last season against Everton. That's not good. I'm no. not liking this, Peach. We have a different team now, Gatesy. True. We have a true, different true. team now. Different set of circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Manchester United. Now, this is a good one. Manchester yeah. United have lost their last two League Cup matches at Old Trafford, though Ooh. both have come at the semi-final stage against Manchester City. They've uh -oh. only been eliminated in the third round on two of the previous 16 occasions at Old Trafford, however, losing on penalties to Derby in 2018-19 and 2-0 against Coventry in 2007-08. Gives us a glimmer of a little bit of positivity, something to grab onto. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's 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 not impossible until you make it possible. Nelson Mandela said that. Records. Nothing's impossible until you make it possible. And you know what? there to be broken. Yeah, we can do it. We we, yeah. we can actually stuff them. And uh, we yeah, I, I think our I think our first team is going to be a lot stronger than theirs, Gatesy. I yeah. really do. We'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah. David Moyes has progressed from 10 of his 15 League Cup ties at the third round stage, including each of the last three in charge of three different clubs. Manchester United in 2013-14, Sunderland in 2016-17, and ourselves last season. Love it. There you go. There's the little nuggets of information, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't know. I don't know what game I was watching, but after Mark Noble missed that penalty, which was so unlucky, um, was he mayor? Did Ali Gunny Solskjaer like kind of like jump around and celebrate like he just won the league? Like it was kind of like what on Sunday? Won. Yeah. Yeah, but then, but then I now, now the thing um, with that peach, I actually take that as a as a bit of a backhanded compliment that he 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 showed so much passion and emotion. I'm not being funny. No, if, if, you, if, we'd have, if we'd have if we'd have been rolled over five nil, then sort of like after a little while, you sort of like you yeah. don't really bother celebrating. Do you know what I mean? It's like what's yeah. what's the point? You know, the game's gone. But it was it was finally balanced. They, obviously, they went ahead. Night eighty ninth minute, the penalty got saved couple of minutes later so it was on a knife edge all the way through yeah. um i i don't have a problem with it i like no, i say no. i ta i take it as a bit of a backhanded compliment and here's i actually thought about this earlier because i don't know if you've seen it there's been a lot of talk about jared bowen's been getting some teams yep. that are looking at him now again i look at that and i think that's a backhanded compliment in a way yeah. it says that we as a club that the coaching at west ham um, the recruitment, all that is doing something right because we've taken a guy from Hull a couple of seasons ago and we've polished him up and we've now got him to a spot where Gareth Southgate said a little while ago that he's on his radar. There's other clubs yeah. that are Premier League clubs that are looking at him saying, hmm, we, we might be interested. It's a backhanded compliment. We're doing something right. We've got to expect that yeah. we're going to have players that are going to be operating at a certain level that are going to be drawing attention to themselves i've i've got no problem with it myself um you know, what do you it, think it was, it was actually it was actually it's a backhanded compliment but it's a nice it's like a soft yeah. backhanded that doesn't hurt it's absolutely beautiful 
And, Put it this and, way: and, Would and, we rather no yeah. one's interested in our players? Yeah. Would we rather yes. our players were crap yeah. and no one, no one was interested? Yes. Would we rather yes. it that when an opposition manager um, gets the winning goal, that the, the opposition yeah. manager just sort of goes, "Well, what's the point of celebrating? They were crap anyway." It's like it's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He knows his team was in a battle the other day. Yeah, yeah. So I got no problem with that. Do you want to and, see what and, the betting and, looks like? Let me just say, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer yep. celebrated like that, I, I, I thought they, like they just won the league, but it was also like, you you were going through some squeaky bum time oh, things yeah. there. You did not think you were going to pull it off. Yep. And the whole thing with Jared Bowen, Liverpool interested him, $35 million. Now Gary Neville's coming out saying that, oh, what a player, so exciting, bursts of energy. Now Tottenham on him. So it's like, and I think it's only going to grow. So a player we got yeah. for, let's say, 18-something million, we'll be able to flog yeah. off for 60-plus. Uh, John's just put it perfectly. Solskjaer can afford to throw on people like Ronaldo, Pogba, yeah. both of yeah. whom at one time or another was the most expensive. You know, Ronaldo, when he went yeah. from Manchester United to Real Madrid, he became yeah. the most expensive player in history. When Pogba yeah. went from Juventus to Manchester United, he became the most expensive player in history. So Maguire. you've got two people that once upon a time were the most expensive player in history could potentially Maguire be on the bench for Manchester United. We don't have that. That's what we're up against. Gatesy Maguire too. He was the most expensive defender back in the exactly. day. Exactly. Exactly. Man. You know, we, oh. we're not operating at that level. So listen, no. we're doing great what we're doing. You know, yeah. we've we've competed, like I say. I mean, Gonzo was right what he said. You know, we took a Manchester United team damn damn close. And yeah. this and we were without Antonio. And I think if we had Antonio, chances are we we don't lose that match. And I'll probably take yeah, it a stage I further. Them. I think if I we had them. Antonio and we had Jesse Lingard, I'll tell you what, we beat them. That's my opinion. But yep. we'll never know. I mean, it's it's hypothetical. Yep. Anyway, do you want to see the betting? Yes, please. Courtesy of Bet365. They don't sponsor us. But, you know, my, my phone's always on, guys. If if anyone's watching this from Brett, Bet365, my phone is on. We'll do a sponsorship deal. It's not a problem. Um, Manchester United. 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 Unfortunately, the betting doesn't make very good reading for, for West Ham fans as far as Bet365's odds are concerned. And probably other bookmakers are very, very similar. Um, full-time results. So after 90 minutes, 9-20 to 20 on Manchester United, 16-5 to 5 the draw, 13-2 to 2 West Ham. That's... Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's not great. Um, if we look at the odds to qualify by hook or by crook, Manchester United are seven to two on, and we are five to two against. So the bookies yeah, don't fancy bet. much of our chances. No, but, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Give me that bet. Put five, five or a tenner on that. You'll be yeah. you'll you'll be buying some pints up at uh, up at the bull straight up. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the prices, prices, prices at Duke's pub, though, you know, I'd probably need it. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> well, maybe, 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 maybe you'll be able to buy one round in. You know what I mean? Maybe nah, one nah. round, that's it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, since, since you've mentioned it, I'll tell you what, yeah. guys, any, any of you that are going past that address there, that's Duke's pub. OK, um, if you want to pop in there, tell, tell him you're a full Shemayan subscriber. Um, he'll, he'll look after you. Um, I'm just you'll, giving you a plug get, out. You'll get a, you'll get a pint for free. You'll get a pint and a burger for free. Well, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, he's got a quiz at his pub um, in about 45 minutes. This is why I, I, because this was originally scheduled for eight o'clock, and then I realised there was a quiz, so I've moved it forwards. Um, okay, right. I'm going to wrap it up there, Peach. I mean, listen. Perfect. The, the 11s that I've put out could be completely wrong. It is so. I mean, normally Premier League games, I can usually get most if not all of the 11 pretty much bang on i'm uh, you know it's it's not really difficult you sort of like you can usually sort of like work an awful lot of it out league cup game it's just like jesus how you know what are they going to do what how are they going to think you know what i mean it's 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 I know, difficult but i like i like i like the way you broke it down uh, um um your predicted 11s on both sides i like I think you might be in with the shout i think you put you you should put some money on that bet uh, 13 to 2 I really do. I really, might, really might have do. a little tickle. Might have a little tickle. Speaking of having a little tickle, ladies and gentlemen, have a little tickle on this. This is 
all on the description below YouTube and Facebook. You can copy and paste this. You can put it onto your social media platforms. Isla is still struggling. Isla still needs your help, my help, everybody's help. So do us a favor. If you can't put any money in the pot, if the, if it's a little bit of a tight month, I get it, not a problem, but do us a favor. Just copy and paste this and put it onto your social media platform. Tell your followers, tell your friends that there is a little girl that has a life-threatening illness. She's really struggling. She cannot get the treatment in this country. Her family have got to raise funds and go to wherever it is in the world to get the treatment. This is really, really expensive, um, and they need help. It's as simple as that. Couldn't care less if they're West Ham fans. Couldn't care less if they're football fans. If they're decent human beings, this will resonate with them. So put this on your social media platforms. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell everyone. Um, and let's keep this campaign you know, the momentum behind it. You've got the Just Giving link there. So if you are in a position to put some money in the pot, then I would encourage you to do so. Give generously. And I thank you, as always, for listening. Katie, can I thank you? I, I want to thank you for having me on this stream. It's much appreciated. Thank you. I wanna, I'm saying, well, thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. No, oh, thank no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, and, after you. And, no, and, after you. you for the West Ham Daily today. That was phenomenal. I thought it was brilliant. Um, how we broke it down. Um, yeah, thank you for everybody watching this. I got a I got a little little channel called West Ham Random. We're yes. on Twitter, we're on Instagram. I just put it on Instagram the other day. Facebook, we're on YouTube. Check it out, like it, subscribe it. And one thing left to say, big up Logan. There you go. There you go. There you go. So, guys, Love if you're not too. already subscribed to West Ham Random, as as Peach says, he's got the YouTube channel. You've got the you've got the Twitter as well. Are you on Facebook? Yeah. You got it on yeah, Facebook? Just, yeah, just just a little. Just all the social little, media um, platforms are all channel. taken care of. Give him your love. Give him your support. You won't go far wrong. And as usual, guys, don't forget to support the channel by dropping a like on the stream. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. Um, just got this one here from Massive Fitness. Um, God bless Reed. Sad to see him go. Hope he finds a new team. Oh, is, is, is he, have they torn up the contract then? I'm guessing that that's saying the contract has been torn up because I know they there was talk that the club and, and Winston Reed were looking to terminate the deal so he could do his own thing. So I'm guessing... What, Winston from, Reed? Yeah, I'm guessing that, oh, the, wow. the, the, that the contract has probably been agreed to be terminated by mutual consent. That's what I think okay. Massive Fitness is is saying. So that's, as I say, it's a shame because, um, you know, on a personal level, obviously, you know, he scored the last goal at the Bolin. He yeah. also scored goals against Millwall and Tottenham, which, you know, yeah. always goes down well with a West Ham fan. Um, yeah. But a little more personal thing is that my daughter plays football and my daughter's squad number is number two, which is Winston Love Reed's it. squad number. Um, and the reason she took it. Um, Massive just come back and said, just on the West Ham Facebook page a moment ago, Massive, pre appreciate you letting me know, mate. As I say, I, I was completely oblivious to that. Um, as I say, it's it's a shame, but I think the writing was on the wall. As I say, I heard whispers a little while ago that the, the two parties were negotiating to, to terminate it. And I think it's, you know, if he can move on, and get a deal elsewhere, whether it's a championship club, whether it's a club somewhere in Europe, I don't know. Um, I, I, just, I just hope that he can he can um, rebuild his career some way, somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he gave us some great moments down the years, obviously, principally the last game at the Bowling. Um, yeah. And I wish him all the very best. There you go. Anyway, we're going to end it there, Peach. Um, do, do our usual sign out, my friend. I think it has to go on like that, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Come on, you Come irons. Come on, you irons. Stay safe, guys. 